Um, hi, so I'm Augustin, and today I'm going to talk about manipulation proof auditing. So compared to the previous presentation where they try to have a very large picture of what algorithm and AI auditing was, in this presentation, I'm going to narrow, a bit, uh, narrow it down a bit on this uh, thing about uh, model auditing. So in order to understand what I'm going to talk about, manipulation, well, manipulation proof and auditing, I'm going to start with a very simple example here. So imagine I'm the French office for regulation and I want to verify that uh, Amazon, the Amazon buy box button is not biased towards Amazon itself. So what you see here is what you see when you land on a product page. And when you click on the button, there is actually a bidding algorithm that is in charge of select, selecting which reseller will be selected to sell the product to you. And this has a great impact on the revenue of the, the resellers on the platform. So again, I'm the office and I want to audit this, uh, this system. So what I'm going to do for Sorry. First is define a metric. So, for example, we could we could use the demographic demographic parity. So, look at the proportion of items that were sold by Amazon versus the proportion of items that were sold by other resellers. Then we would have to select uh, a subsample of queries, so a subsample of items on the platform because we cannot look at all the items uh, on Amazon. So, we would, for example, choose the top K best selling products. And then we would have to collect uh, all of the labels, let's say, so collect uh, um, which item was sold by which reseller. And this was before the uh, recent European regulation. So, for example, here, what would only be accessible is just scraping the platform. What I'm going to talk about in this uh, presentation is a um, framework that has been introduced by Yan and Zhang a few years ago that tries to understand what, are, what can we call manipulation in this framework. And I'm going to present some of our work here where we try to uh, show that this framework is not enough for now if we want to have audits and regulation that are robust to potential manipulations by the platform. Okay, so as I said, we have three steps that we have to define as a regulator here. So choosing the metric is already done by in the literature. This is uh, understanding, for example, the impact of the metric that we choose. Then we have the choice of the queries. So what are the biases uh, that are associated with each technique to choose a query? So random sampling or top K, etc., have different implications. And then the last stage, which is data collection, is something that has been less studied in this uh, theoretical framework. So a lot of people have tried to uh, scrape platform very efficiently, but there, have, there are actually very few works on what happens if the platform detects that it's being audited and tries to manipulate the answer in order to appear fair, let's say, uh, when it's not. So, um, just to introduce uh, the, the framework here. So assume that we have an audit metric, I'm sorry, so demographic parity, for example. We'll assume that uh, we are looking at a platform which implements a binary classi a classifier, which lives in some hypothesis space, so some space of uh, classifiers. So the audit will effectively be an interaction between the platform and the auditor where the auditor sends query to the platform, the platform answers labels, and the auditor is allowed to, um, to construct its audit set actively. So they can base the choice on the, of the next query based on the labels of the previous query. And what the platform could do to try to escape this audit is to detect the auditor, sandbox them, and then after the audit, change for another model. So during the audit, the auditor saw a model H, which is very fair, even though it's a little bit, a little bit less accurate. And then after the audit, the platform switches to another model that is far more accurate at the price of fairness, for example. And the whole goal of uh, this uh, robust auditing thing is to bound uh, the difference in uh, the par parity metric between the old and the new model here, the old model H that we saw during the audit and the new model that is implemented after the audit. So of course, if we don't do any, if we don't make any further assumption, we cannot bound anything here. So Yan and Seng introduced two assumptions 
The first one is that the platform has to declare the type of model they use to the auditor. And the second one is that if the auditor asks uh, the same questions after the audit, the answers should not have changed. So for example, the, the auditor already uh, conducted the audit and to verify that the conclusions are still valid, they will just resend the queries and look again at the queries, at the answers to verify that they are the same. And so as I said, the goal is to um, bound the effect of uh, this model change by the, uh, by the platform on the parity metric, so on the demographic, demographic parity, for example. And we want to bound this uh, absolute difference. And it turns out that this is bounded by a quantity that we call the diameter of the version space. I'm not going to go too much into the details for now, but just think of it as a worst case bound. What is the worst impact the platform could have on the fairness metric if they change their model after the audit respecting the, the previous guarantees, uh, previous assumptions, sorry. So, Yanensek proposed three algorithms. So random one, an optimal algorithm, uh, which is uh, interacting optimally with the platform in order to construct the audit set. But sadly, it has a hardness result. And then an approximate algorithm where they use some um, uh, shadow models in order to select the next points to query to the auditor. And all of these models have a very uh, nice complexity bound. So we know what are their performance. But the issue is that all of the computational costs, so the query complexity and thus the computational cost, depends on this, uh, the, on the type of uh, hypothesis space that is assumed by the platform. And the fact is this hypothesis space is chosen by the platform. So the platform might be tempted to choose a hypothesis space such that the performance of all of these algorithms becomes the same. And this would be very bad for the auditor because at first they would have lost a lot of compute uh, to create a clever audit method for nothing. And secondly, the guarantees that we have for the random algorithms are very low and we need a lot of, uh, a lot of queries to send to the, uh, to the platform in order to have a meaningful guarantee. So this would increase the cost of auditing a lot. And as we saw, there is already a power difference between the platform that are being audited and the teams that audit uh, these platforms. So this was the question that we asked. So are there some kind of hypothesis class such that the, the platform can render uh, the guarantees of any audit meaningless? And can we find them in practice? So the first hypothesis class that we considered here is what could be the perfect data scientist uh, hypothesis class, the perfect model, uh, a model that could be able to fit any labeling of the input space. So here we assume that the input space is finite. So this could, for example, happen. So this type of uh, hypothesis class could be a model with a, very, a lot of parameters compared to the size of the data. And for this type of hypothesis class, we found that the guarantees of, on the um, audit manipulability are, uh, have a very nice expression that only depends on the proportion of points that you sample in the two sensitive groups uh, when you create your audit set. And this is, a, this is an issue because here we can see that if we have a random algorithm that achieves this proportion, then any other uh, so be it clever algorithm that selects the points uh, actively will have the same performance as this uh, random algorithm. So of course, this is a very uh, unrealistic uh, type of hypothesis class. So we try to look at different, uh, at other uh, type of hypothesis class. Uh, so dictionary models. So you remember the training data and then you try to have an educated guest after. Here we showed that the, the guarantees that we have on the uh, audits are uh, depend so still on these proportions, but also on the dictionary size. So on some kind of notion of the capacity of the hypothesis class. And then we looked at uh, a similar type of, uh, uh, type of model, which are models that exhibit uh, benign overfitting. So a few years ago, researchers showed and observed that the vision models that are used for classification, for example, can uh, reach a training loss of zero when they are training, uh, trained long enough and still retain good generalization properties. And here, this would be a very bad thing for us because for this type of models, if the, um, 
if the platform uh, overfits uh, on their training data and on the audit set, uh, if their model is large enough, they can overfit practically any audit set, then they will still be able to appear fair to the auditor and then also have uh, good performance even at the cost of fairness on the rest of the, of the input space. So here we showed that the, the guarantees depend again on the proportion of points that are sampled in the two sensitive groups and on the test error of uh, these benign overfitting models. So uh, as a recap for now, we have found some types of hypothesis class that render, that increase the cost of the audit arbitrarily for the auditor. And we've shown that uh, these type of models are models with a high capacity. And so can we observe this in practice? So to answer this question, we simulated a few types of model on uh, classical tabular data, data sets for, uh, in the fairness literature. So we simulated, for example, decision trees uh, or linear models. And we, um, so for each type of model, we simulated different uh, values for the hyperparameter values, where a hypothesis class would correspond here to a type of model along a fixed set of hyperparameters. And by varying, for example, the depth of the decision trees, we are able to vary the capacity of the, of the, hypo the hypothesis class. And we looked at two metrics, the audit manipulability, so the diameter I talked about, which uh, is a worst case bound on how much the fairness metric will change after the audit, and the model capacity, which is uh, the uh, an estimation of the Rademacher complexity of the class. And to have uh, some intuition on this, it's just how well uh, a hypothesis class can fit uh, random noise. And this gives us an idea of uh, how powerful this uh, hypothesis class is. And what we observed is that, uh, as in theory, as uh, the intuition we had with the theory, the audit manipulability, so you can see, you can see on the y-axis, is highly correlated with the model capacity that you can see on the x-axis. And what's more, so here the audit manipulability is uh, measured with a random sampling algorithm. So the simplest algorithm that we saw can be optimal in some cases. And so. In the case of a capacity of one, this uh, audit metric, this audit methodology is optimal, and we see that it has very bad guarantees. And for uh, models that have a low capacity, then this, this uh, audit um, method is already good. It already has a nice property. So these graphs, in a way, it tells us that we should not try to, uh, for this type of models at least, trying to find more um, clever uh, audit algorithm for now it seems to be a, a waste of time. Um, we had some hope uh, with uh, the, the cost uh, on the accuracy of the model that could uh, be induced by changing the hypothesis class from uh, an optimal hypothesis class to a hypothesis class that is able to game the audit. And we show in the paper that uh, this, costs, this cost is very low for the platform. They can always choose a model that games the audit and still retains a good accuracy. So to conclude, I really like this summary by one of the reviewers of the paper, which said exactly this. So uh, however, uh, whatever the task, the platform can always try to game the audit without sacrificing a lot of accuracy of the model learned. So, in conclusion here, uh, in, so if we go back a little bit, what we try to achieve is robust audits. So audits where we have guarantees on even if the model changes a little bit or even if the platform tries to manipulate the answer. Here we had one possibility, which was to encode the auditor prior by the knowledge of the hypothesis class. And we encourage uh, everyone to try to find other ways to, uh, to encode this uh, this um, a prior knowledge of the hypothesis class in order to have guarantees for the audits. Thank you very much for your attention. I'm happy to take questions.